Okay, so today we're going to be going over the practice problems from lesson two. And of course, we're talking about corresponding parts, scale fact, and scale factors. So here we are, we have this H-shaped polygon and the scaled copy. We have to show one pair of corresponding points, corresponding points, and two pairs of corresponding sides in the original and its copy. Consider using colored pencils, etc. Okay, so I mean, luckily for us, it's not turned on its side. We, we can very easily see that like the, the big section and the big section are right here. So that, of course, would mean that this would match this, this bottom and this bottom. So there's the whole bottom of it. We wanted to show all the top pieces. Now, the directions for you were not, you didn't have to show all of them, but because everybody probably has uh, different different sides that they chose. I'm just kind of getting everything in here. So we've got their sides. And then um, we've got these inside pieces here. These would be the ones on the right. And then we have these over here on the left. And the other thing that it did say was to um, show some corresponding parts, or points, I mean. So this right here, whoops, let me redo that. So this would be a point, corresponds with that point. This one here, right there. I think you should be getting the general idea here as we go around. I mean, my small one is getting harder and harder to see, obviously, but we can carry on around and keep showing all of them um, just to make sure that no one is missing any of the given parts. <laughs> that one actually looks like it's covered in confetti, doesn't it? That's kind of funny. Um, cut this corner. I think you, hopefully by now, you're getting the general idea here that it's not... Um, you know, it's not too hard to see where the the corresponding parts are. And of course, those corresponding parts help us with our, um, when we're looking for the scale factor, we have to make sure that we know the corresponding uh, parts so that we can set up our ratios and proportions because that's really the only way to do it properly. So, and we're almost done. We've only got one more. What do we got here? <laughs> There we go. That one's a little off. But you get the general idea. Now, it then asks us, what is the scale factor? Okay, what is the scale factor when I go from the original to the smaller? Okay, so I <laughs> now I can't really see it because of all the everything that I did. But if you look in the smaller one especially, you'll notice that it goes over those lines. So I did want to avoid that if I can. And I can do that by looking at this center right here. One, two, three, four. So this is four. And although it's pretty covered up, I can tell you that that's only one. And if you remember, we we're told to simply divide. So I'm going to divide the smaller copy, one, because it's one, um, one, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's one uh, unit for every four units in the original. Now, I don't have to reduce this. It's already done because, remember, this is in a one to four ratio. The other way we can write this would be one to four. But for our all of our purposes, I strongly suggest that you write them like this because then it's easier to manipulate those numbers when it comes time to do so. 
figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. Now just to be clear here, they wrote this and there's no picture of this. There's no picture of it anywhere. So don't try, is it the H one? Is it the, the next one, the polygon for number three? It is not, it's none of those. It's just a general statement that says that figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. And now here's the thing, select all of the statements that must be true. They must be true. It's not maybe true, they must be true. Okay, so the first one it says figure B is larger than figure A. Well, that doesn't have to be true, right? So I'm going to say nope to that one. Figure B has the same number of edges. Well, if they're a scaled copy, we know that they're the same shape, and therefore they would have the same number of edges. So B is a go. Figure B has the same perimeter as figure A. Well, the same perimeter would be, the perimeter remember is like building the fence around it, and if it was the same always, like it had to be, that would mean it would always be a scale factor of one, which that's not what this says. So C also no go, doesn't work. Figure B has the same number of angles as figure A. Well, that's really just like this one here. This one, same number of edges, same number of angles. D works. Figure B has angles with the same measures. And if you remember the exercise that we did when we uh, used the tracing paper over the railroad signs, that was proven that we'll always have the same angles. So we have B is always true, D is always true, and E is always true. Okay, polygon B is a scaled copy of polygon A. And this time they actually gave us a diagram. What is the scale factor from A to B? So going from A to B. So there's really only one place where we have both corresponding sides that are shown. And the only ones that show, the, the only sides, the only corresponding sides are the top one here. We've got 2.5 and 5. And it tells us every single time when we're going to find the scale factor that we're supposed to take the scaled copy. Polygon B is a scaled copy of polygon A. The scaled copy, so that's this one. I'm going to label it just so we don't forget it. And this is the original up here. Okay, so the scaled copy. So the only measure we have is 5 divided by the original, which is 2.5. So if I divide those, remember, think about money. When you get confused about decimals, think about money. So if I have $5 divided by $2.50, well, I should know that. The answer to that, 5 divided by 250, or 2.5, is 2. Because remember, I would always have um, 2 over 1, or just plain old 2. So the scale factor in this case is 2. Because if I took my 2.5 on the bottom and multiplied it by 2, I would get 5. Now, I need to find the missing length of each side marked with a question mark. So I've got this one and this one. So, of course, I need to find the corresponding sides. So, the corresponding side to this one is 2.5. Now, I don't even have to do the math here. Why? Because if I look at the one that I already solved, that's 5 and 2.5. So, that means this question mark is going to be the same. It's going to be 5. So, the only more complicated one, and it really isn't, is I need to figure out how to get from the 1.5 to the question mark. So that would be 1.5 times 2. Think about money. If I've got $1.50 and I'm going to multiply it times 2, it's going to give me $3 or 3. So this side is 3. Determine the measure of each angle. Well, it is really important that we don't forget that each angle is the same when I go from one to the next on scaled copies. So that means that this angle right here is the same as this one, so that is 53 degrees. Please remember, you don't need your um, you don't need your protractors for these. They they've already written the numbers in here for us. 
Okay, so the bottom one there is 82, and the other marked one is 53 degrees. Next, complete each equation with a number that makes it true. Now, I certainly hope when you're doing these, you aren't using your calculators, because the whole point of this is to make sure you, you, you know how you're doing with your mental math. So, 8 times some number equals 40. If I didn't know that, I'd say, what is 40 divided by 8? Hopefully, I know that that's 5. So, 8 times 5 is 40. Now, this one, I think, this next one, B, I think they're just doing this to make sure we're paying attention because I've got 8 plus some number equals 40. But I don't know what that is. I have to do 40 and take away 8 to see what we started with. And that should give us 32. So, this one is 32. Next, 21 divided by some number equals 7. Well, I know that means 7 is a factor of 21. We're just looking for the other number that's in that factor family. So I would do 21 divided by 7 and get 3 because it sure is true that 21 divided by 3 would most certainly give me 7. Now here we go again. I think they want to make sure that we're paying attention because that says 21 take away some number would give me 7. Take away some number. So again, we've got, we don't have a factor family. We have a little bit of a fact family. So if I have $21, I've got $7 left. I'm basically asking, how much did I spend? Well, to figure that out, I'd subtract what I have left from what I spent, and that would be 14. So 21 minus 14 is 7. 21 times some number is 7. This is probably the hardest one on here, although I'm really hoping you don't think it's very hard, because if I go back up here to this, C and E are basically asking the same thing. Remember when we did the math Macarena? Well, that's what's happening here. What's the same as dividing by 3? Well, it's multiplying times 1 third. And there you have it.